Hello everybody, this is Josh Placer from GameWisdom.com. In this Spotlight video, I am taking a look at Conflict's Revolutionary Space Battles. And yes, that is a chicken holding what appears to be a gun, I think, and a flag. This is the next game from Artifice, Artifice Studios. I'm, I'm sorry, I probably butchered that name. They're the developers behind the game Sang for which was a tower defense meets uh, ARPG involving the Canadian Devil and Canadian Werewolves. And that almost seems normal <laughs> by now in this game. Before we get started, uh, please keep in mind the time of this recording, the uh, conflicts is on early access. So screenshots and what you're going to see tonight may or may not uh, be what's currently in the game, what the current version of the game is. Sorry about that. That chicken is distracting me. <laughs> anyway, they're hoping for, I believe, three to six months in early access from the time of this video. And I'm, wait, I'm not quite sure how to make of this game. It's very weird, both figuratively and literally, with how it works. This is a real-time strategy game meets almost Angry Birds, with this almost like Monty Python-like aesthetic. Anyway, this game is so weird that normally I skip opening cinematics and such, but I'm going to actually let you guys watch it. So, give me one minute. I'm going to exit out. Please uh, pay no attention to the black screen. So, as you need to see this. Alright. Alright, I'm just going to let you guys uh, soak this in for a minute. Before his death, Leonardo da Vinci decrypted ancient secrets and discovered Metamata. And the course of history was altered. With this power unleashed, conflict erupted, and Metamata producing penthouses spread to every corner of the earth and until the planet became overrun. As empires launched it into space, war kept at a pace. Greater Britain led by Henry VIII, harnessed control of the Metamata trade, and bulwarked by Britannian reinforced man of wars, commissioned valorous corsairs, <laughs> such as Wilbur Pitbottom. Francis I of the Celestial Empire asserted his claim with ostentatious ships, captained by noble musketeers, as well as roguish new recruits, like the young Leon d'Artagnan. This left Charles V of the Sacred Alliance merely amused, for his own monks had developed space-time bending metamata meditation. Brother Octavio is even proclaiming to be guided by an angel. As if it was not enough, those of the Sublime Gate entered the fray. Governed by the accursed Sultan and his cloning capable wife, Roxelaine. Among their countless soldiers art Khan and Cain, fearless warriors that bow to their enemies as if they were blind. But while these powerful armies fight for control, innumerable fowl toil in hen houses and dissent grows. Rumor hath it that presently even the chickens wish to rise up. Alright, well, I hope that explained everything to you folks. That definitely ranks up there as probably one of the strangest um, openings I think I've seen in a game in a long time. Give me one second here. Just want to make sure everything is still good on the feed. 
and we will get back to it. So, that was the opening cutscene, and we're going to play a little bit of Conflict tonight. I'm still not quite sure what I make of this game just yet. One interesting thing that I want to point out is the multiplayer progression. The developers have it that playing online and completing different achievements will actually improve your ships. It's like little minor things that you see like 20% chance of staying activated, reducing cooldown, but it's very... I'm, I'm just very curious to see how this is going to react when the game comes out of early access and people find that multiplayer is going to be dominated by these achievements. I don't think we're going to be able to show anything tonight because I'm not sure how many people are actually playing this game online at the moment. Anyway, we're going to start the campaign up. And I'm going to start a new game just so we can see everything from the beginning. Yep, the Chikrathi Federation. <laughs> Love this aesthetic, too. One of the problems I had with Sang for it was I felt that the game looked very basic, very rudimentary 3D. They have seemed to have learned from that, and this game looks just so unique. Yes, the chickens are evolving. Alright, so, we're going to start the game, I'm going to keep it to normal, because I am still pretty crappy at this game. And you're going to see why this game is so interesting once we get into it. Alright. Looking mustache there. All right, here we go. Rules of the game are: you basically have to kill your opponent's capital ship to win, and you're going to harvest meta matter from various planets, and this is going to allow you to create your army. Our advisor is basically a robotic owl with the brain of, I think, John Locke right now, by the way. Okay. So, to control everything, what you do is go on left click on the ship, and we need to destroy these enemy ships to take over that planet. So, I'm going to build Corvette. So to launch it, you basically left click and drag backward on the ship to launch. You're basically flicking, as the title of the game suggests. Click on the ship. Now the blue circle represents the range that the ship's going to go when I let go. So you want to try and aim it. And these points right here, if you get a ship onto it, it basically gives you free supplies. So you can immediately move again. Otherwise, you have to wait for the ship to recharge. So while that ship is moving, I'm going to build a torpedo ship. Combat is initiated simply by moving the ship into range. You can also drag a ship so it bumps into an enemy ship. Like so. And if you get into like the gravity well of the ship, it's going to destroy it. Uh oh. Better move this guy. Yeah, this ship is going to die. Oh, it killed the other one. But that ship is going to go. Create a scout. And these black hole or wormholes allow you to instantly transport over there. Okay. Good. And I can also flick out a missile. Like so. Meanwhile, this patrol ship has a huge range, as you can see. So I'm going to try to get him right here. My resources of men are shown down here. And when I run out, I will have to wait for either a ship to die or capture more ships. So you can see I'm draining men mad created. 
So I want to try and show you what happens when you take a ship. Oh, I missed there. Okay. And this is all real time, too. Okay, move you over here. I'm going to take another torpedo. Okay, take that. Oh, I hit. Good. And what I'm going to do is hopefully get this ship to do a suicide run. Die. Oh, killed him. Okay. Oh, looks like the enemy is coming to his area. Alright, I gotta get some more ships out quick. I wish there was an indicator to let you know when a ship is done charging. Oh, oh no. No, boom. Meanwhile, we gotta take out that guy up there. Oh, so close. The art stack still is really nice. Okay. That's still recharging. Yeah, I, that is a bit of a UI flow in my opinion. You can see when a ship is done charging. Here. And you do do damage enemies if you ram them, like what I just did. So now we're going to replace that plant's chickens with our own. Yes, I did say that. With a henship. Henship, go. Same rules, you want to try to get into the supply points. Which I just missed horribly. I'm going to move my ships back to the wormhole so that way I can defend it. Uh oh, hope I don't take damage. Oh! Okay, good. I don't take damage from ramming my own ships. Okay, come on. I don't think this game is also being made for the mobile device. I think it's just for the PC. But they're going with this very unique interface. Come on. Ugh. But as you can see, it's not exactly the most elegant thing. So I just gotta move the ship a little bit more. There we go. And now he's going to bombard... Look at that, he's bombarding the planet with chickens. When this meter fills up, the planet will be ours, so we just have to wait. My ship cannot move on its own, but I do have an emergency attack I can use, the pyroclastic flow. Okay. I have no idea what they're talking about. So now with those ex the extra meta matter from the planet, I can build some of the lake ships. The destroyer and the battleship. Or the frigate. I'm going to build the battleship. Oh. You're no match for me with just one ship. But that just did a huge drain on my metamatter, obviously. So I'm going to send this ship and my friends into the wormhole. They'll pop out the other side. I can also use a frigate to tow the other ships and basically move a huge amount of distance. Oh, this ship takes forever to relaunch. I don't want to attack his ship without my ship in orbit. There we go. And I can see I can create other ships using that one. Attack. Ram them. Nice. Oh, now range. Go, my ships.
There we go. So he's leaving. <laughs> Graciously fled the battle. Thank you. And that was the first mission of the game. Up oh, here we go. So we're going to go into mission two now and see what's going to happen. Here's our patrol ship. So the patrol ship has a lot more armor for just meleeing or ramming ships like that. Each faction, I think, gets seven ships. And as you can, uh, from the beginning, there are four factions total. And we're going to see how this game plays out. Definitely a very odd strategy game. Okay, we're back. Greater Britain. We're a part of Greater Britain. <laughs> That's a very fancy looking ship. We're gonna have to chick a form. <laughs> okay. There's our hen ship. Some more meta matter coming. Oh, good. I can head over there and take that out. Meanwhile, I gotta send these guys up. Go, my ships, go. It basically lets you tether all the ships nearby to it, and then they'll all move at the same rate as everyone else. Basically, lets you command move like five ships at once. Okay, you should be done. Again, I want to take over as many ships as I can. There's the frigate. Oh! No, I didn't want to do that. That ship's almost done. Create a Corvette. 
He is chicka forming. Hmm, I can actually knock my ship into the other ships. Okay. One of the problems is it's kind of hard to see what ships are what. But that could just be me not getting used to things. So we want to move over here. Whoop. You don't hit me, I hit you. I'll probably create another frigate once I get more juice. Again, the frigate will let me move all these ships at the same time. Huh? Okay. And I'll see if I can show you how that works. There we go. Alright, so the frigate has locked on. And now I can move him all the way over here. Get out of my way! Cancel the, the clock on. special attack. He killed himself. Yeah, the ships don't recharge health, thankfully, so I can use that to my advantage. Okay, another frigate. That frigate's kicking. I mean, that destroyer is kicking ass. Once we get this other ship there, I will launch everyone at the mother hen. <laughs> I think the eye doesn't know how to control things either. Okay. And then just to cement my victory, I'm gonna send two destroyers. One thing that's a little confusing is you have to use the flick for everything. So that for freedom. Oh, you are so dead. I 
you know, well, you're dead. Take that. Yeah, I wiped out a poor man. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, we're going to Greater Britain. You know, I will have to get to the developers. They really came up with a very interesting world in this game. But the controls are just such a weird thing. As you can see from watching the video so far, this isn't the most uh, intuitive control scheme. Especially if you're used to traditional real-time strategy keyboard and mouse controls. This can just be very hard to maneuver. Let me see, what are we up to time-wise? We'll play a few more, I think. Maybe we will try multiplayer, but I don't know yet. Oh, there are the chickens. The chickens got red eyes. Oh no, the chickens are rising up. Yes, I just said that. I never thought I would. Cancel any flick. Alright, where are we? Hildegard von Chicken. Oh good, the chickens have evolved. Wait, the workers get their own ship? Oh boy. Oh crap, I hit the wrong ship. Up, oh, restart. <laughs> I do think they should be a little bit more um, distinctive with some of these designs. <laughs> oh god. That would be like a uh, match um, forfeit move there if I did that in an actual multiplayer. Okay, let's try this again. There's the end ship. Okay, there's one. There's two. I'm not sure what this stuff is. But I can move my ships into the wormhole. Oh, you put the wrong one to go. My wormhole disappeared. Interesting. So they appear and reappear at will. Wait, what happened to my second hen? Okay, there we go. Kill that and then we'll warp it. ships. So 
smart. Oh, I just missed completely there. Just spawning ship as quickly as I'm putting them out. Why is the ship not taking it over yet? There we go. That was weird. Oh wait, I can just shoot ships in. <laughs> that is like the freaking story of my life there. Alright. You think you're so tough? Ships. All right, I think I got things stabilized. It's definitely hard to keep track of what's going on because of how much you have to commit your focus to individual actions. I get it, it's a blind spot. Interesting. Alright, that's one down. That should make things a lot easier. Okay, so now we have to go down here. One left, it should be a lot easier to take them out. I wonder if there's like a rock, paper, scissor like combat in this. Alright, so that's gonna take him up, which I don't want to do. I just want to send some ships out. Corvette seems to be a pretty good, like, all around average ship. Oh wait, I still have ships over here.
my ship. Once that warp comes back, I'll move these ships into attack range. There we go. To me, my vessels go. Send the ship into the other ship. Go, die, chickens, die. Boom. Very nice uh, aesthetics for like the cutscenes and whatnot. Okay. That is a weird looking face on this guy. 30, <laughs> 30 second wife of the Emperor. 29, 28, 27. Okay. That's a weird sound effects, jeez. Okay, well, I think you guys have got a good idea what conflicts is. So I guess, let me go over my thoughts then, let me exile this so I can speak without being distracted by the map. I like this idea of the game. Again, the aesthetic and the stories are amazing, but this kind of interface, though, I'm just not quite sold on. As you can see, because you are manually controlling your units like this, it's forcing you to really dedicate your focus to the micro layer compared to other real-time strategy games that focus on the macro. Oh, I need to lower the sound a little bit more. Okay. So I'm not sure how well this game is going to do in the strategy market. It definitely gets points for uniqueness. There is no other game like this I can think of. And the aesthetic, I think, really does help to distinguish it from a lot of other games on the market. But the current version of the game, you get the single player campaign, and the developers are going, I believe, they want to push the multiplayer side. You basically have friendly, ranked, I think it's ranked and unranked. There is going to be ranked play once the game is further in. Let's see, yeah. So friendly play, I think this is if I want to have people like come in and play. Like I can invite my friends, whoever's on. Greater Britain, Celestial. I like how they each have different chickens. <laughs> Two-headed chicken, what? But I think you can only get the achievement unlocks through like competitive multiplayer. So that's basically when I set up a game and first person comes in, we're going to play. Over here... This UI, I I'm just not sold on it. This basically shows you how many ships you have and of what. And I, I don't know. I don't think it really works that well. Wait, so can I move this ship? Oh, I can, but it costs a huge amount of meta matter. Okay. There's a battleship, destroyer, frigate. Wait, so do they have the same ships? 
oh, they have the same ships, but they have different effects on each ship. So my Corvette for Greater Britain basically gets enhanced shields to make it resistant when I ram stuff. Their Corvette basically spawns an explosive ship to help you. Their bell ship creates a clone. Okay. Alright, so that's interesting. While everyone gets access to the same ships, these little special powers are different. So that means that overall balance is basically tied to the meta layer of the ships types, and then they go further down with each individual faction. I see. So let's see. So again, basic gameplay remains. You have to take over these planets. But you can get meta matters. You can see I saw with enough meta matter to do some basic stuff. Again, the artwork is really impressive. I, I really do like that. But I think there needs to be some kind of indicator to let you know what ships have moved, which ones haven't. And that should be visible on your minimap, I think. Maybe like a brighter color for ships that you can move, duller color for those that are still charging. Because if we look at this, everything just looks the same. I have no idea who that is. But yep, yeah, this is conflicts. Wow. You can see the different planet sizes give you different amounts of meta matter. And we'll look at the achievements one more time before we wrap things up, I think. So as you can see, it's all basically passive stuff. So you're not unlocking like super abilities for your ships, but whenever you have competitive play, Every little upgrade, every little differentiation is going to affect how the game is perceived. So, if you look at this, being able to like reduce the cooldown or increase range, even if it's only by like 0.5%, it's still going to matter in the eyes of competitive players. And I just don't know how this game is really going to take once it gets out of early access. I mean, it's definitely unique. I've said that multiple times on this cast, but I mean, it really is. I have to give the developers credit for that, but I'm just not sold, I think, on the legs of this game. And that's not a uh, chicken thigh pun there. I'm just not sure, like, if this is going to be a game that's going to be played a year from now, or even six, seven months from now, after the game is out of early access. I'm not sure if what this game is, is strong enough to distract people from other strategy games. It's definitely unique enough. You can't play this game the same way as you would StarCraft or Planetary Annihilations or anything like that. But I'm not sure if there's enough here to really lend itself well to the competitive scene. I hope it does succeed for the developers. because. The game's universe is interesting enough, especially this art style, that I want to see more of it. I'm just wondering if the solo campaign is going to become more popular than multiplayer due to the enhanced story and how crazy it is. But hopefully this should be enough to kind of wet your whistle on what Conflicts is. As I said, you can currently buy the game on Early Access on Steam. I don't think it's available anywhere else. It is currently $20, and let me just see, oh, my mistake, it's actually going to be on Early Access for one to two months, not three to six, I was thinking of Duskers again. So right now, pretty much the single player campaign's in, they're, all the ships are in, and they're hoping to have more in terms of multiplayer support, rank battles, stuff like that, when the game comes out of it. And, like I said, I don't know if I'm going to show more videos of this, maybe? If anyone's watching this and wants to play this game online, because I don't know how well the multiplayer is, definitely shoot me a message. 
But anyway, I'm going to call it for this video. Again, hopefully this should be enough to give you an idea of what Conflicts is. Uh, I guess to sum things up, I like this game, but I think in some areas it may be too unique for its own good. But I'm really curious, again, to see how this game is going to fare with reviews in the next month or so. So, with that, I'm going to end things here for this video. If you've been watching this live, thanks so much for tuning in. If you've been enjoying this on YouTube and want to see more, please like and subscribe to the channel. It'll help me out a lot. Everybody, please check out Game-Wisdom.com for posts and podcasts relating to game design and the industry, as well as our ongoing Patreon campaign to secure some much-needed monthly funding to keep everything running. You can find me on Patreon under Josh Spicer or Game Wisdom, and any donations would be greatly appreciated. And lastly, for the YouTube crowd, I'm getting the heroic music just to make me sound more uh, boisterous. Uh, for the YouTube crowd, uh, please check out the Twitch channel that is nightly at 10 Eastern under GW Bicer to catch these streams live, as well as general plays of a wide variety of games. Hopefully this music is making me sound like this is a rousing speech. So I will wrap things up here. Thanks again for tuning in, and I will catch you all next time. Take care.